Uh, my name is Aman Ali. I'm a stand-up comedian uh, from the United States. I live in New York. And I've been doing stand-up now for about six years, and I've traveled all over the United States and all over the world, been to 27 different countries. And as I travel, um, I find that people are going through very, very common struggles, especially in the Muslim community, unemployment, um, you know, just simple depression. What do I want to do with my life? I can't find a good wife. I can't find a good husband. I'm very lonely. Nobody understands me. And the great thing about stand-up is I now have a platform to talk about those struggles because I feel like... When we we live in our homes, we feel like, oh, I'm the only one that is going through this. Nobody understands me. And comedy is a great way to showcase those problems and those issues to connect someone in Europe to America. Because I feel like there's a lot that Americans don't know about Europe. And there's a lot that Europeans don't know about America. And I'm able to use my voice and my projects and my stand-up and what I'm passionate about to bridge those gaps, to create those conversations that weren't happening before. The beautiful thing about art, art is a uh, tool of expression. And so there's been a lot of conversations, am I a Muslim artist, am I an artist who happens to be Muslim, you know, am I Christianically challenged, like whatever, like, it's important that you have your own voice. And there's some people, being Muslim is very, very important to who they are, and so for they themselves, they're a Muslim artist. You know, Muslim, being Muslim to me is very important, and so I don't make a differentiation, but if someone's not a practicing Muslim, you know, and they're passionate about something else, why should they have to talk about it? It's important that you are true to who you are on stage. You're not fake, you're not someone else. And that's the beautiful thing about art is, it's a tool of expression. Not um, catering to the masses or anything like that. And so, I tell artists, just be who you are. I want you to be the same person you are on stage as you are off stage. And it's very hard sometimes to, to do that. Um, I've been a comedian now for about six years and a lot of people have approached me and said, wow, this is new, this is a new thing, this is a new trend. Muslims are singers and entertainers and poets and comedians. This actually isn't new at all. This is actually a very, very ancient thing. Like, if you look at in, early on in Islam, even during the times of Prophet Muhammad, there were people in the community that he were known for their jokes, were known, known for their poems. Rumi is one of the most famous poets in world history, and he was a very, very old poet, but his, his work is still held on a pedestal today. This is not something new. This is a renaissance. This is a rebirth. To see comedians all over the world, Muslim comedians, Muslim singers, Muslim art, this is something we're going back to our traditions. We all come from very, very rich cultures where art, poetry, architecture, painting, photography, this is something very, very deeply rooted in our culture, in who we are, and we're just simply getting in touch with our roots. So this is not something new. This is going back to who we are. This is a rebirth and not something that's a new trend whatsoever. Well, I'm not here, to, I am a Muslim, but I'm not here to preach. And people say, well, are you just trying to educate non-Muslims about Islam, give them a positive image of Muslims? Honestly, not really. I'm here, I feel like my role is to tell stories. When people have questions, I want to paint a picture of what a Muslim's life is like. I want to paint a picture about what my life is like, what my friends' lives are like. And I want to use these stories to educate people. Not to convert, not to argue or anything like that. That's not really what I see my role as. I am a storyteller by heart. I don't put any political spin, any religious spin, or any philosophical spin. If you learn something great, that's awesome. If I reinforce something that's negative, hey, that's just as awesome as well. We live in a free world where we're able to interpret things the, the way we want them to. My mission is, am I interesting? Am I telling an interesting story? That's really what my mission is, is to tell these stories about my life, about my travels, and about the people I meet. I've been doing comedy now for about six years, and my parents were initially against the idea. Not because they were like, oh, we don't like comedy, comedy is wrong, or music is wrong, or anything like that. They just came from a very, very tough struggle. Like, my father came to America in the 1960s, and the very first job he had was cleaning the floors in a donut shop. And he would clean the toilets and clean the floors. And so, he was against comedy not because, oh, it's wrong, because, well, I don't want you to struggle, son. How are you going to make money? He didn't want me to go through the same hardships that he had to go through. And so, he pushed me really hard to succeed. And to, he said, well, if you want to be a comedian, 
What is your plan? Where are you going with this? And now they absolutely love it. I get a chance to travel the world and to tell these stories, not only about my family, but about my life. And they get very excited to see me on television. And they get mad when, hey, how come you didn't send me a video of your last show? You know, we never get to see you. I want to see you on TV. And so now it's a very, very exciting thing because, you know, the struggles that they went through, the fact that my dad sacrificed his social life, he didn't get a chance to golf like other parents. He didn't get a chance to go on vacations. He worked every single day of the week. He, he made the sacrifices so that I didn't have to. And so when I talk about my family on stage, it's not as a way to mock them, but it's a sense of gratitude. It's a sense of thank you because I don't have to go through the same hardships that you know they had to go through. A lot of young people say, they'll see my shows, or they'll see music, wow, that's great, but I wish I could do that. I don't know how to do that. I don't know where to go. Here's the most beautiful thing. There's no magic school that I went to that taught me how to do this. I just got up and I started doing it. It's really, really that simple. If you want to write jokes, write jokes. Go on Facebook, write jokes, and let people go from there. If you want to be a poet, post it online. The internet is a beautiful thing. There's no excuse, well, I don't know how to get booked at a club. Put a video up on YouTube. It doesn't cost any money. Everybody has a cell phone. Make it. Make a video. Put it up. And you just have to get up and do it. And you know what? You're going to fail initially. I failed. Everyone is going to have a bad time. But it's not about failing. It's about getting up and getting excited. Most of the greatest figures in history were failures. Abraham Lincoln failed time and time and again. Had an unsuccessful business. Ran for office. He failed. Many musicians struggled. The Rolling Stones, Aerosmith, they were playing horrible gigs. And many artists, Lady, Lady Gaga, hey, she had record deal fail year after year after year. But it was about that struggle. And it was about being persistent at it. So if you have an idea, follow those passions. You're going to fail along the way, but the reward of being persistent. And you're going to look back like, man, I remember those days where people wouldn't even book me. I remember those days where... People used to boo me and throw things at me. Now people get very excited, like, where can I get your next performance? But it's about that struggle. It's not about getting knocked down. It's about how you get back up. And there's nothing more beautiful than that.